situation that really happened. And after that, we see that second messenger, he uh, comes and he says, elders of Thebes, most honored in this land, what horrors are yours to see and hear what weight of sorrow to be endured or to bear. If through your birth, oh please, the students, what's wrong with you? Okay. Okay, so then, uh, sorrows to be endured, if true to your birth, you penetrate the line of Labdacos. I think neither Isros nor faces those great rivers. So now <clears throat> there is an allusion. Allusion uh, uh, is a literary device. It is a kind of, you can say, literary device in which there is a reference back towards the history. Okay, so uh, Isros and on the other hand, faces, they, uh, they too are, you can say, the rivers like of the beautiful waters of the beautiful rivers. And you will also find the reference of uh, Aestrus and uh, Faces in the work of Aeschylus. <clears throat> okay, so in Aeschylus, um, the writer has also used, because these, these uh, rivers are basically uh, like uh, <clears throat> having the importance like Ganges River, like Ganga, okay, so we see that they are the beautiful rivers and those great rivers could purify this place of the corruption. So we see that, again, it is alluded towards the history at that time. Like it is alluded, it is given a reference back uh, towards the history or towards uh, the previous situation, previous, uh, you can say, uh, like it has been given as a reference, like Istras and Phases, those beautiful rivers that uh, could purify this place for the corruption. So like you see that the corruption is in the thieves it at in its extremity. It's, it is in its worst position. So that is why we see that Istras and Phases those rivers can only purify the city from the pollution or from the corruption. Uh, it can not be sheltered by anyone else because the corruption is, uh, you can say, in abundant or it is in infinite in this city of thieves. So it shelters now soon must bring to light, even not done unconsciously, but by will. So it is the evil. We see that, yes, it is true. You see that previously, when Oedipus Rex, mother and father, Queen Jocasta, and on the other hand, King Louis, when they have been asked by the God, that, like, they, this is a prophecy, and you have to follow the prophecy, you have to abide the prophecy. What they have done at that time, they try to go against the will of the God by sending that child to get rid of, or to, to get rid of this child. So this is what really happened previously. Like they tried to go against the will of the God, because if the God has prophesied that there will be a child and that child will be killing his father and marrying his mother, so I think that they have to, uh, might be after some time, if this does not happen, like after, 20 years if that child is actually mature enough or adult enough, might be, you can say that uh, there can be two possibilities. Might be the gods are actually sending another oracle not to do the same as it was prophesied once uh, prophesied uh, before. Okay? This is the first situation. The second situation is that can be, uh, you can say at that time, done it is <clears throat> like first uh, that the that the gods can ask to alter their prophecy or alter the situation or might be in the second time it can be i forgot that okay 
uh, let me get, remember that okay it was like the two points that we can include in that with particular with that with that situation okay if it comes in my mind i will tell you so it was the corruption of the ice uh, it was the river of icebergs and faces okay that they both can purify the corruption of the cities otherwise there is no one who can or who could purify this city with this abundance and on the other hand their second statement it was that evil not done unconsciously so it was done by jigasta and louis willingly like with their willing like they try to uh, go against at the will of the god against the uh, prophecy of the gods so we see that that was the punishment that they received yes there is one question that we all um, must be thinking that okay that it was the fault of jacasta and on the other hand of louis but why the gods have punished king edipus rex so viciously uh, with 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 their blind um, uh, malice okay so this is the question that one can think about the situation that okay it was you can say the wrong thing by king louis and jacasta okay but why the punishment is given to edipus rex we will be discussing this after this completion of the text so it was done willingly the greatest griefs are those we cause ourselves so this is you can say the thing that is actually our our error of judgment sometimes this is a sometimes that we are unable to find the truth sometimes we are unable to assess the things that are actually against us so this is the, the, the these are the greatest griefs that are those we cause ourselves that we do with ourselves okay so that is why we see that edipus rex is doing uh like in the form of griefs and sorrows with himself because as an audience we knew already that it is edipus rex who is investigating or making an inquiry about the death of edipus rex and he is what he is doing by avenging the murdered king he thinks that he is protecting himself but we think that he is killing himself okay so this is the story that we already know so it was the greatest griefs that are those we cause ourselves so this is what edipus rex has uh, you can say planned for him he has planned for him that he will be doing this and he will be facing all these things by the will of the god and we see the kora goes surely friend we have grief enough already what new sorrow do you mean second messenger says the queen is dead because whether that the situation that she produces at the time when she was about to leave you already know that she was like a, like she was filled with great sorrow and she was filled with great pain when edipus rex was talking about uh, uh, when he was talking to the messenger or the or, or the shepherd and he was uh, asking or he was saying about uh, that childhood pain or that childhood tying of the ankles so we know already that with that situation because she was the mother at that time and she knew that who tied the uh, feet of uh, edipus rex at that time or of that child uh, at that time and asked to get rid of that child so she knew that so that is why she rushed into the palace and uh, what really happened that now she is dead with that because she was filled with with sorrows koragos jacasta dead but at whose hand second messenger her own so it seems that she has committed suicide instead of someone someone else has killed her second messenger her own the full horror of what happened you cannot know because sometimes we this is the speciality of the drama or speciality of the story 
like we do not know the other side of the story so now it is the duty of the other characters like because first of all this is the responsibility of the writer and on the other hand it is the duty of the other characters because this assignment is given to the character that you must be telling the audience or the readers that what really happened inside that room because we do not know that what really happened over there and we do not have any any other idea about that so the other characters may let us know that what really happened okay so that is why the second messenger is telling us that what really happened over there that is full of horror first of all because we know that when she is dead there is something like um, happened with her and how this happened for you did not see it but i who did and as you haven't seen it but i have seen it and will tell you as clearly as i can how she met her death how she killed herself when she had left us in passionate silence passing through she ran to her apartment in the house her hair clutched by the fingers of both hands like if i was in the class that i would have to do the same like clutching once hair with hands like how distressed the situation is how a person is so sad and dismay it means that when one when one clutches their their hair with the hands with the power of the hands it seems that that person is full of depression that person is full of sorrows or full of, full of you can say um, emotions and passion passionate of something she ran to her apartment in the house she her hair clutched by the fingers of both hands she closed the door behind her then by that bed so now look at the language again like sophocles does not miss or does not leave any place where he cannot show his excellency of the language even though the situation is worst even though the situation is extremely good he doesn't leave any 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 line or you can say any any place where he does not include his beautification of the language or of the or the sublimation of the thoughts okay so he that she closed the door behind her then by that bed where long ago the fatal sun was conceived that deadly that deadly sin was done or that sun was conceived on that bed that sun who should bring about his father's death we heard her call upon lois we heard her call upon lois dead so many years and heard her wail for the double fruit of her marriage so he when she was about to die when she was about to commit suicide so she was calling her husband she was cursing basically uh cursing the fruit double fruit of her marriage how because first of all she was married to louis and she received or conceived a son that is the first one and after that with the same son she received and conceived four another ch- uh, children so we see that is a double fruit of her marriage a husband by her husband children by her children look at the expression so that is why we see that is a, a husband by her husband why we see that because king louis was a husband and by that husband she receives another one and children and it was rex was a children was a child and again she received children by her by the children by her children so exactly how she died i do not know i do not know for edipus uh, burst in morning and would not let us keep vigil to the end is this the same the next page yes sir 
Okay. For Oedipus, bust in mourning. So Oedipus now, again, he was also filled with with mourning, with lamentation, with sorrows, with cries, and with pains, and would not let us keep vigil to the end. It was by him, as he stormed about the room, that our eyes were caught. So now he was, again, in great anger. He was in great anger, and he stormed about the room. He rushed towards the room with great anger, and our eyes were caught. From one to another of us, he went begging a sword. He was asking for a sword. He was in great anger. He was going from one place to another, watching everyone and asking for a sword. Give me a sword. Cursing the wife who was not his wife, the mother whose womb had carried his own children and him. So he was asking everyone to give me a soul. And he was cursing the wife who was not his wife, but with whose womb had carried his own children and himself. At the twin doors, like there were, there are when where you see that the doors are very gigantic, of very gigantic structure. So the twin doors, the bolts gave and he rushed in. Okay, so a kind of the bolts, when they were opened with, with a kind of, you can say, burst or a, a thirst of the hand, and he rushed in. And there we saw her hanging, her body swaying from the cruel cord she had noosed about her neck. So she has basically committed suicide by hanging and there was a rope around her neck a great sob broke from him like he started crying he started screaming a great sob broke from him heartbreaking to hear it was a cry it was a weep it was a scream full of full of uh, you can say sorrows full of tears, full of blood that one cannot hear. It was the heart breaking to hear that cry of Oedipus Rex. As he loosed the rope and lowered her to the ground. Similar as you see that when a person is hanging to the ceiling, so that person is actually... Uh, he is brought, or uh, that person is brought down and lowered down softly. And then I would blot out from my mind what happened. I cannot tell you that what really happened next. For the, for the king ripped from her gown the golden brushes. You see that like uh, the older women... They were using gowns, they were using clocks, they are called, and uh, like a kind of robe. So they were using different brushes, like I think the girls are also using, and they can also pronounce this as it is broche or brooche, what it is. Yes, broche, I think so. Because it is a kind of, uh, you could say you are pinning up the gown, you are, uh, uh, you are pinning up the clocks that you are wearing. So with that brochure that is having, uh, you can say, the pins or having the pointed ends, like kind of brochure. So they were her ornaments and raised them. And what did he did? King Oedipus Rex, he take off the brochure of, uh, the, of the dead queen and he, uh, after that, he raised them, raised them with her open arms and plunged them down straight into his own eyeballs. So you see that how he is actually taking off the brushe or the pins or the ornaments, the, the, the pointed ornaments, the sharp ornaments of, of, of her clock or of her robe and then he is raising them and plunging them down straight into his own eyes and crying no more no more shall you look on the misery about me 
the horrors of my own doing too long you have known the faces of those whom i should never have seen so he starting plunging his eyes blinding himself with the pointed brush of her mother of his mother and of his wife as well so by saying that you cannot see you could not see the miseries you cannot see the sins you cannot see the crimes that you have been doing with your loved one and the horrors of my own doing too long you have known the faces you have known those faces with whom you have done this with with whom i have done this. you thought that he is actually making his eyes the responsible for everything because he is saying that okay you were watching every you were watching every faces and you have watched when i was a child so you could have told me about the faces that whom i have known for so many years but relation i have with them you must have told too long been blind to those for whom i was searching i was blind to those things for for those things that i have been searching for so long i ask to god when i i search them everywhere who are my father and mother but they were blind at that time for this hour go in darkness and as he spoke he struck at his eyes not once when he was speaking he did not strike his eyes only once but many times as the blood spattered his beard is having the beard so his blood came out from the eyes and his beard was wet with the blood his beard was spattered with the clots of the blood and bursting from his ruined sockets like red hair and it was it was bursting it was dripping the blood was dripping from his ruined sockets the blood was running from his eyes eyes have been shaped like a metaphorically described as the sockets so they have been dripping from the sockets like red hail as it was as it is the snow falling like the red hailing it is a kind of you can say that the snow falling is like his eyes are actually bursting burst with the blood and so from the unhappiness of two this evil has sprung a curse on the man and women alike the old happiness of the house of labdogor was happiness enough where is it today where is it today it is all veiling and ruin disgrace death all the misery of mankind that has a name and it is the holy and forever dear cursing the situation cursing the everything cursing everything cursing the human being every wrong that has been done with him or that he has done with the others kora go is he in agony now agony still and pain still is there no rest for him second messenger he is calling for someone to lead him to the gate you know the words of tiresias how he has defined the situation that is about to happen with edipus rex he said you will be asking for someone to take me to the gates you will be asking and your cries who will not hear your cries will have will be heard everywhere even in the in the in the cathron as well the mountains of the cathron so he is now again we can still remember the words of tiresias he is calling someone to lead him to the gates so that all the children of cadmus may look upon his father's murderer his mother's 
no, I cannot say. I have already done with it. Everyone is done with this story again and again. We all are done with it. I cannot say it again. I cannot. But he is asking, he is asking that he may be brought, he may be brought in front of the children so that every man, every child, every chi uh, ch child of Cadmus may look upon his father's murderer and his mother. And then he will leave Thebes self-exiled in order that the curse which he himself pronounced may depart from the house. So it was the curse that Oedipus Rex has proclaimed or pronounced on himself. That it, is, it, it will be now a kind of self-exile. But what he asked for previously, it was that the man may leave the land safely. If that man tells that he is the murderer. But now the situation is totally different. It will be a self-exile or self-banishment. That he himself will be removing himself. A prosecutor will be removing himself from the position. from Because the verdict that, they, that executioner or that prosecutor has given. That executor is not for anyone else but for himself. So he will be removing himself from the land of Thebes. He is weak and there is none to lead him. He is too weak. He cannot stand alone there. He cannot walk. He cannot move. So terrible is his suffering. But you will see. Look. The doors are opening. Now you will see the horrors. You will see the man who is coming and you will be feeling horrified. You will be feeling frightened by looking at the face of Oedipus Rex that is now just coming. Look, the doors are opening. In a moment, you will see a thing that would crush a heart of stone. This is a thing that will, even though the break the heart of the stone and what you are, the man, you will see. The central door is open. Oedipus blinded is led in. He is led by an attendant, Koragus. Dreadful indeed for men to see. It is dreadful indeed. Never have my own eyes looked on sight so full of fear. This sight is full of fear. I never saw such a thing in my life. Oedipus, what madness came upon you? What demon leaped on your life with heavier punishment than a mortal man can bear? This is not the punishment that a mortal can bear. No one can bear like, an, like a mortal being such heavy punishment on himself. This is too much. This is a savagery of the God. This is too much. A normal man, a common man, a mortal man cannot bear such high punishment or heavy punishment by the God. This is too much. So what, what actions you have performed? What was the madness that came upon you? What demon that lived on your life with heavy punishment? No, I cannot even look at you, poor ruined one. So now, the, the worst thing about this all is that the statements of the people, the statements of the people that what they are saying, that we are unable to look at you, you poor ruined one. And I would speak, question, ponder, if I were able, no. You make me shudder. I cannot ask you even. You make me terrified. I cannot ask you anything. I do not have the courage to ask you anything about. No question. No answer. No ponder. No thinking. No speaking. Deepest. God. God. Is there a sorrow greater? 
is there any sorrow greater than this having this blindness having this sorrow having this pain is there any great misery than this where shall i find harbor in this world where shall i find a place to stay a harbor or a shelter in this world my voice is heard for one dark wind what has god done to me what ultimately god has done to me i cannot see kora goes too terrible to think of or to see you cannot be seen like this and we cannot hear you we can feel the sorrows we can feel the pain of you even though we cannot look at you it is a cloud of night never to be turned away this is a cloud of night that will never turn away because it is dark 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 and it will last dark and dark night coming on i cannot tell how night like a shroud it is like a shroud like in which a dead body is wrapped it is a cloth of peace so it is like a it seems that my eyes are covered with a night like a shroud my fear winds brought me here oh god again the pain of the spikes where i had sight the flooding pain of memory never be gouged out even though the spikes the pains of those pins he can fill now where i had sight and of flurry pain flooding pain of memory never to be gouged out he even though can bear the pain of his eyes that he has pained them that he has plunged a spike in them and that was not a one time it was like he plunged them with that rocher with that pins with that spike many times he even though can endure or bear that, that pain what what about what about the memory never to be gouged out it can never be scoop out it can never be scoop out from the mind because the mind thinks the same even though i have just cut off myself from the miseries from the things that i could see around me i have only cut off myself but what about the thing that will be lasting in my mind like a memory i cannot scoop them out i cannot gouge them out what about them never to be gouged out kora goes this is not strange this is not strange this suffer it all twice over remorse in pain pain in remorse so this is you have suffered you have suffered it you have suffered when you were having the eyes you suffer when you do not have the eyes and it will remain there forever antistrop edipus ah dear friend are you faithful even yet you alone are you still faithful and loyal to me you alone are you still standing near me will you stay here will you stay here patient to care for the blind do you really care for the blind for the man who have done this thing with his mother and all the other things that i cannot tell you but you already know and you still loyal to me and you will be enough patient to stand by me you alone care for the blind the blind man yet even blind i know who it is who it is it is attends me by the voice stone though new darkness hide the comfort so i am the blind who can only judge who can only identify the voices of the people and can identify them and though my new darkness hides the comforter it hides the comforter it cannot give me relaxation give me 
desolation anymore. And this hides the, this removes the comforter. Korah goes, oh fearful act. What God was it drove you to break black night across your eyes? What God was it? Who was it? Who was the God who turned you into a black night? Who give who gave you the shroud of the black night, the cloud of the black night? Who was it? Oedipus, Apollo. Apollo, dear children, the God was Apollo. He brought my sick, sick feet upon me. But the blinding hand was my own. It was the only word of the God that made me do that. It was the fate. It was the fate. So now you can also use this line as a reference to your question that is about the fate and the free will. Okay, this is a perfect example for your free will and your fate. He brought my sake, sick fate upon me. It was Apollo. He planned me, planned all this for me. But the blinding hand was my own. How could I bear to see when all my sight was horror everywhere? How could I bear to see? My, I can see only the horrors and horrors and horrors everywhere. I cannot see anything else. Kora goes, everywhere, that is true. Oedipus, and now, what is left? Images, love, a greeting even, sweet to the senses. Is there anything? So nothing I can see now. And what is left? Only the images. Love. A greeting even, sweet to the senses. Is that everything? Because you know that when you can see the things, you have a lot of things to do. But when you cannot see the things, what are they? You can only produce the things from the existing knowledge, from the existing understanding that you have seen, that you have observed. But you cannot see anything new. But what you are doing, you are interpreting the previous thing. You are pretty interpreting the previous images or the things that you have done. And now, this is another painful situation that one can see. Ah, no friends, lead me away. Lead me away from Thebes. Lead the great wreck in hell of it. This is a destruction for everyone, for the country, for my family, for my children. I am the wreck. I am the destruction and hell of Oedipus, whom the gods hate. The gods hate me so much. So take me away, lead me away from this place. I am a great wreck. I am wasted. I am useless. Kora goes, your fate is clear. You are not blind to that. You are not blind to your fate anymore. You are done with your fate. Whatever gods have planned for you, it is in front of you. Now you can see that, but not with your physical eyes, but with your internal eyes. But you have to face this. You have to suffer this to see your fate, and you have seen it. Would God you had never found it out? So your fate is clear, you're not blind to that, and would God you had never found it out? And you have never found it out when you were having the eyes, but now you have found it out, oh God, and this trophy. Oedipus. That take the man who unbound my feet on that hillside. Now you see that he is cursing the people who were responsible for Oedipus Rex to, for this day and for this situation. He will be now cursing all the people around him who were basically, you can say, uh, were included in the story of the action 
or like they were responsible to for for this fate of Oedipus Rex. So now he will be cursing all those people. Death, take that man who unbound, who untie my feet on that mountain or to the sun, and delivered me from death to life. What life? What life? So he delivered me because he was asked to get rid of me or to kill me. But what life? If I only had died. So he is thinking that that death will will would have more appropriate than this wretched life, than this wreck of life. That death would have been a good gesture for me. This weight of monstrous doom or fate could not have dragged me and my darlings down. Parents. So they could it could not have dragged me and my darlings down. But what was the cause? It was my only and only fate. If I could have died already at the mountains of Ketron or Corinthian mountains. I could not have survived and I could not have faced this fate. I could not have done the things that I cannot bear to listen, bear to hear that. I could never have ever killed my father and could not have married my mother. So I could have died already. Koragos, I would have wished the same. I wished I, I wished have uh, I would have wished the same for you, Oedipus. Oh, never to have come here with my father's blood upon me. If this was the same, then I could have never ever arrived here with my father's blood upon me. Never to have been the man they call his mother's husband. I would not have been given that title that the people call me his mother's husband. O oh, accursed, O oh, child of evil, the same now you again will remember. Again will remember Tiresias, child of evil. To have entered that wretched bed, the self-same one, more primal more primal than sin itself, this fell to me. Koragos, I do not know how I can answer you. You were better dead than alive and blind. You were better dead. The situation is now, you can say it is more painful for everyone around here. You see that Koragos is not, is not one who is actually who cannot bear this thing. He cannot see the thing. He cannot think over the thing. That what really happened with Oedipus Rex. And what about the situation that really happened with someone like Oedipus Rex and how he could be bearing this? Okay, so this is unbearable, unspeakable. So do not counsel me anymore. This punishment, if I had I. Do not counsel me anymore. Do not consult. Do not talk to me anymore. This punishment, if I had eyes, if I do not know how I could bear the sight of my father. When I came to the house of death or my mother, for I have sinned against them both, so it relieves me a little. If I am blind now, it gives me a relief, but a little. Because if I could have eyes, how could I have bore the sight of my father when I came to the house of death? Or my mother, for I have sinned against them both so wildly, openly, that I could not make my peace by strangling my own life. I could not do this if, if I had to die. If I kill myself, I could not rest my thought 
I could not rest my body in peace forever. But that is why I have just blinded myself. Just to make me sure that whatever you have done, you will be repenting on that sin or on that crime for rest of your life. Otherwise, if I have to kill myself, that was the easiest thing. My body, my pain, they could never have been rested. That was the easiest thing that I could have done. But no, I have just blinded myself. I have just blinded myself to carry the memory of the repentance, to carry the images of my loved ones, to carry the images of the, of, of the wrong actions or of the crimes or of the sins with me to just remind me that whatever I have done. So that my life or, or I, a deeper sex, would be repenting on those actions or would be repenting on that. So this is how we see that he did not strangle himself. He did not kill himself. Or do you think, my children, born as they were born, would we switch to my eyes? Or do you really think that if I could have eyes, so the so the I I could I could see my son with those eyes, thinking of that they are my children, but they are from my mother's womb. So do you really think that I, with my own eyes, when with my eyes, I could have seen this thing? I could have uh, I could have endured this all. No, I couldn't have. So as now, ah, uh, never, never. Not this town with its high walls, nor the holy images of the God, for I thrice miserable. Oedipus, noblest of the old time. I am thrice miserable. Of Cadmus have condemned myself to enjoy these things no more by my own malediction, expelling that man whom the gods declare to be a defilement in the house of choice. This is the worst punishment, a kind of malediction. Removing the man whom the gods declare to be a defilement or the corruption or the disease or the culprit in the house of Lois. After exposing the rankness of my own will. How could I look man frankly in the eyes? No, I swear it. If I could have stifled my hearing at its source, I would have done it and made all this body a tight cell of misery, blank to light and sound. So I, saw I should have been safe in a dark agony beyond all recollection. So if I could have the chance, if I could have this ability to do myself or to tight, tighten myself in a cell of misery, in a cell of blank with, without light and sound, I should have been, I should have been done the same in a dark agony beyond all recollection without the memories of the past. I could have done this I, if I would have the ability to do so. Just to tighten myself in a cell where no could see me, where no could, no one could hear me, where no one can talk about me. That this is the man who has been doing crimes and sins with his own mother. So I could not have heard the people in the same way. Ah, uh, Catherine, why did you shelter me when I was cast upon you? Why did you shelter me? So you could have, now he's again cursing the mountains that you have, could have killed me at that time. Oh, the mountains of Catron, why did you shelter me? You must have killed me at that time when I was cast upon you, when I was placed on you, when I was kept on those mountains. Why did not I? Then I should never have shown the world my execrable birth. Then I could not have bear this, this shameless birth, world my execrable birth. Ah, Polybus, Corinth, 
city that I believed the ancient seat of my ancestors. How fair, how fair I seemed. Your child and all the while this evil was cancerous within me. How could I tell you? How could I ask you that this was the sin, this was the disease, the cancerous disease that was spreading in my body secretly. And this was the evil that was spread in, my, in me or within me. For I am sick in my daily life, sick in my origin. I was not the one anymore. You know, the words of Oedipus Rex, I, Oedipus, who bear the famous name. And secondly, yes, I already know. I was not sleeping and you are not waking me up. I have already done that. I have already taken an action against that. Everything that made him do, made, uh, he asked for, people asked for, he has already done for the people. Everything that the people can spoil or resume, he has already done that. So how a great man full of intelligence, full of excellencies, can be beaten by the fate of the God. You see how the powerful fate is upon Oedipus Rex. It means the belief system is still stronger than a man can think. And on, in my daily life, sick in my origin, all three roads, dark to ravine, Woodland and wave when three roads met you, drinking my father's blood, my own blood, spilled by my own hand. Can you remember the unspeakable things I did there? And the things I went on from here to do, oh marriage. Oh marriage, marriage, the act that engendered me. And again, the act performed by the sun in the same bed are ah, the net of incest. Mingling father, brother, the sons with brides, wives, mothers, the last evil that can be known by man to no tongue can say how evil. So this act, that engendered me, that jeopardized me, that made me a problematic one that made me a dilemmic one because it is a dangerous act that I have done and performed by the sun in the same bed it is it is done by Oedipus Rex with his mother in the same bed of incensed insist mingling father again the relationship so what people will be thinking, incest is a relationship with the loved one. Sometimes it's a relationship with, with sisters, with brothers. A sexual relationship with one another. The relationship of siblings, as you might have seen in the Game of the Thrones. King Jemmy and uh, the Queen Cersei. They have been doing the same. Like a kind of incest. So, what is the thinking of the people other than that? Is of incest, the mingling father, brothers, son, with brides, wives, mothers. Look at the relationship that he draws. So no one will be taking care of the relationship anymore. People will be frightened. You know that such situations, such things, they frighten us most. When we think of the relationships like this, we think of the relationship that we cannot even though think, we cannot even though imagine when they are done, when they are performed, no one can think that this, they, they are, the people are frightened. This can be known by men, no tongue can say how evil, because people will be thinking how the man, a man can do this. And no, for the love of God, conceal me somewhere far from thieves or kill me or hurl me into the sea away from man's eyes forever. Hide me somewhere 
far from the sea or kill me at least or hurl me into the sea or just away from man's eyes forever or take me away take me away from the eyes of the human beings come lead me you need not fear touch me of all men i can alone bear this death. so there is no need to come near me i alone can bear all this pain and agonies of my life there is no need to come and the most awaited person is entered kriyon Okay, are you people uh, listening? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, shall we continue? Because uh, shall we continue? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think we should finish it now. Yeah. Yes, we we must finish it today. Okay. So you see that now. the crayon uh, again crayon is there and crayon is the one you see that who is the most uh, dejected character by edipus rex he has been he has been alleged by edipus rex on his plotting against the king or against the power or against the status of edipus rex and uh, when he justified himself that no i didn't do that i was not conspiring against you with edipus with with tiresias but edipus couldn't believe him so now you see that this is a this is another situation between crayon and edipus rex once again and you will see that what it is Cora goes. We are not the ones to decide, but Creon here may fitly judge of what you ask. You see, now uh, again, Creon is there, and Creon will be the new king on the place of Oedipus Rex. so we are not one to to decide we are no one to do something or to decide something or to judge or whatever you are asking for or to give them any kind of grant but creon is he only is left to protect the city in your place so he is on your place to protect the city and whatever he will be doing or he will be performing so we must abide or we must abide to do that On the other hand, we see that Oedipus Rex, alas, how can I speak to him? What right have I to beg his courtesy, whom I have already, uh, whom I have deeply wronged? You know what Oedipus Rex has done with Creon. So I have already done a lot of wrong things with Creon. So I cannot. how can i beg his courtesy upon this thing can you and i have not come to mock you edipus or to reapproach you either to attendants you standing there if you have lost all respect for man's dignity at least respect the flame of lord helios the the lord of the hell so if you have lost the respect for a man's dignity this man is blind and you all are just watching that man in his great suffering and doing nothing do not allow this pollution to show itself openly look at creon's statement now you know he is the man who who has been asking again and again to believe me the prospect to believe me and now he said do not allow this pollution this pollution to show itself openly here and affront to the earth and heavens rain and 
the light of day. No. Take him into the house as quickly as you can, for it is proper that only the close kinder see the grief. So this is not the one who can be shown to the people. This is the pollution for everyone, for the city, for the house, for everyone. And he cannot be, or this pollution cannot be displayed. Take him in to the house as quickly as you can. That only the close kinder can see his grief. Only his own people, his own children can see him in this grief or in this sorrow. Not the people. Oedipus, I pray you in God's name. Since your courtesy ignores my dram expectation, visiting with mercy, visiting with mercy, I pray you. With mercy, this man of old men, most execrable, give me what I ask for your good, not for mine. So now you see again. The behavior of Oedipus Rex is totally changed. He is not that king anymore. And secondly, he is not that man who was filled with arrogance and with proud. He is now very humble, very humble to just take the grant of his permission, uh, of, of his, of his uh, uh, desire that he just not want to stay over here for anymore, but he just want to move from this city so that is why he uh, he's actually asking for creon and what is it that you would have me do what that you want what is it and uh, you will see that he is asking definitely to remove me or to banish me from the city creon says uh Edipus says drive me out of this cult country as quickly as you so remove me. It will be a self exile so you can remove me from this country as soon as you can. So this is the favor that I ask. It, Kion, I should have done that before. Now only God's will had not been wholly revealed. You see, if Oedipus Rex, he is not paying attention or he is not, you can say, he is not believing the will of the God. But on the other hand, we see Kirion now started believing the will of the God with more affirmation, with a strong affirmation. You see, he says that I should have done that before now only. Like I should have already done this before just to remove you from this country as soon as possible. But I cannot do this without the will of the God. So I am waiting for that if they will be revealing me. Okay, this is what you have to do, then I will be doing the same. I cannot do this on my own. Oedipus. But his command is plain. The patricide, the pollution must be destroyed. I am that evil man. So the patricide, the evil, the killer must be destroyed, must be killed. So I am that evil, Kirion. That is the sense of it. Yes, it is the same. But as the things are, we had best discover clearly what is to be done. The bus, but before doing that, we just need to know what God wants us to do that. So we must wait for that. Clearly the actions and that what is to be done. Oedipus, you would learn more about a man like me. Kirion, you are ready now to listen to the God? Oedipus, I will listen, but it is to you that I must turn for help. I beg you, hear me. The women in there, give her whatever funeral you think proper. She is your sister. But let me go, Kirion. And Kirion is not letting go Oedipus Rex just because of the fear that might be the gods are asking not for only Exilement or the banishment for Oedipus Rex might be they are ordering 
the death or the killing of Oedipus Rex. So that is why he is just waiting for the revelation or the oracle. So that is why he is not letting Oedipus Rex go. And on the other hand, Oedipus Rex is asking that he uh, please let me go. I cannot stay here anymore. And he's uh, uh, also pointing towards the dead wife and mother and sister of Kirion that please give whatever funeral you think proper to your sister, but let me go, Kirion. Let me purge my father's thieves of the pollution of my living here. Let me purge. Let me let me cleanse let me cleanse the fa let me cleanse my father's thieves of the pollution so let me cleanse this pollution of by by living here i am proved to be a pollution and when we when i will be leaving the city then i will be purifying or i will be purging the city and go out to the wild hills to catherine that has won such fame with me the tomb of my mother and father appointed for me and let me die there as they willed i should and yet i know death will not ever come to me through sickness or in any natural way i have been preserved for unthinkable fate so now you see that he is he thinks that he is already um, he already knew about his death that how death will take him he says that it will not be in any natural way or any kind of through through any kind of sickness. It will be an unthinkable fate. But let that be. As for my son, you see that there is one thing that he now started believing on the concept of fate. That okay, it will be unthinkable. It he doesn't think that the death will like this, as he was already claiming in his life. Or in his kingdom that this will happen like this and this will happen like this okay so you see that he is not sure about his death already so he is it, it will be an unthinkable fate but let that be as for my sons you need not care for them they are men they will find some way to live but my poor daughters who would have shared my table who never before have been parted from their father. They have never been, they have never been far from their fathers. Take care of them, Creon, do this for me. And will you let me touch them with my hands and a last time? Will you please let me touch my, my daughters with my hands for the last time and let us weep together? Be kind, my lord. Do not do anything wrong with them, with my daughters. Yes, my sons, they will find a way. They are the men. And they will find a way of their proper living. But do not do anything wrong. This is the fatherly love that one can imagine. Do not do anything wrong with my, with my daughters. Take care of them, Creon, do this for. And will you let me touch with my hands? Be kind, my lord. Great prince, be kind. Could I but touch them, they would be mine again, as when I had my eyes. So they could be mine again, because when I had the eyes, when I had the eyes, I could have that thought that they are mine. But when I am blind, so now my life has taken a new shift. So I just now want to feel them. I want to touch them with my hands, so they will be mine once again then enter antigone and ismini with the attendant they are the daughters of oedipus rex ah god is it my dearest children i hear weeping has creon pitied me and sent my daughters creon yes oedipus i knew that they were dear to you in the old days and now and know you must love them still so I knew that you love them really in the past and you also love them now. So that is why I granted this. I granted your permission. I sent them to you. Oedipus, may God bless you for this and be a friendlier guardian to you than he has been to me. Children, where are you? 
like now he is actually swaying his hands in the ears he cannot see he is asking come here come quickly to my hands they are your brothers hands that have brought your fathers once clear i to this way of seeing ah dearest one i had neither sight nor knowledge than your father by the woman who was the source of this own life and i weep for you when i think of the bitterness that men will visit upon you and all your life what homes what festivals can you attend without being forced to depart again in tears so you will be haunted everywhere you will be mutilated everywhere you will be uh, you will be commented by the people that okay these are the daughters of oedipus rex the man the the damned man the cursed man these are the daughters so then you will be forced to depart you will be feeling yourself you will be finding yourself in tears by leaving every every company and when you come to marriageable age where is the man my daughter who could dare risk the bane that lies on all my children because there is a ban on my children this is the restriction this is the ban no one will get married with you because they already knew that you are the daughters daughters of edipus rex is there any evil wanting your father killed his father sowed the womb of her own bore him and gendered you at the fount of his own existence that is what they will say for you then whom can you ever marry there are no bride grooms for you this is the curse that i received from my father and mother and this is the same curse that you will receive and you will never get married now you see that this is the fatherly love for for the daughter even though whatever he has done whatever he has performed with his eyes with his body with his pain it is unimaginable but even though or still he cannot think the same for his daughter so that is why he is fearful in that thing that who will be getting married with you can you be ever ever married there are no bride grooms for you. and your lives must wither away in to lie dreaming or kilion of son of nokia you are the only father my daughters have since we their parents are both of us gone forever they are your own blood you will not let them fall into beggary and loneliness do not let them beg they must not be the beggars after me because they have no more family anymore their their mother is already dead their father is at the brink of misery and he will be leaving the town in a uh, in a minute and after that you alone will be guarding them you alone will be the father and mother to them do not fall do not let fall them into the beggary into poverty and loneliness you will keep them from the miseries that are mine take pity on them be sympathize them see they are only children friendless except for you promise me this great prince and give me your hand in token of it kion claps his right hand children i could say much if you could understand me but as it is i have only this prayer for you live where you can be as happy as you can happier please god than god has made your father so be happy more than your father do not be your father anymore be happy as you can because kiryon has already clapped his hand with mine and he has promised me not to fall you in a bag in in beggary or in poverty or in loneliness or in any kind of distress or depression kiryon enough you wept enough now go with them edipus i must but it is hard kiryon time is is all thing time is is all thing time removes the pain 
time removes everything from your life. The worst thing, the worst memory it removes. Oedipus, but you must promise, Gideon, say what you desire. Oedipus, send me from Thebes, Gideon, God grant that I may. Oedipus, but this God hates me, Gideon, no, he will grant your wish. Oedipus, you promise, I cannot see beyond my knowledge. Again, the same, same, same thing. I cannot speak beyond my knowledge. It is you. It is you, Oedipus Rex only, who could have spoken, who have spoken beyond his imagination, beyond his knowledge. You have rejected every person's argument. But I could not. I cannot speak beyond my knowledge. Oedipus, then lead me in. Come now and leave your children. Oedipus, no, do not take them from me. Kirion, think no longer that you are in command here. Think no longer that you are in command here, but rather think how, when you were, you served your own destruction. So do not think that, that you are in command here. No. Just think that when you were over here, you served your own destruction. Only you did not serve the people. So think of that. And then they exit into the house all but the chorus. The Koragos stands directly to the audience. Now, Koragos is direct, directing to the audience. Men of thieves, look upon Oedipus. This is the king who solved the famous riddle and towered up and became famous and became popular. Most powerful of men and no mortal eyes but looked on him with envy. Yet in the end, ruin swept over him. It destroyed him. Let every man in mankind's felicity consider his last day and let none presume on his good fortune until he find life at his death, a memory without pain. So now, this is the end of Oedipus Rex. And I hope so that everything that I delivered today will be understandable for you people and uh, you really, I hope and I wish that you have really enjoyed the text and it will remain with you for the rest of your life. Everything, every character, every situation, it will last for, with you forever. And you can forget Sarihan and you can never forget this text in your whole life. Okay, so this is, yes, uh, we are done with our text and uh, the first text and now uh, the whole week if we have we will have any other class before 14th of december then we will be having the question and answer session if it is not possible then we will be arranging our extra class on saturday or sunday wherever you like and whatever time you time you like and then we can arrange our class and then we can discuss why we, we will take only one hour or two hours just to uh, solve our queries or our uh, other questions that we will be discussing in, in that class only okay so is that okay with everyone because i think this is the time for your new class and i i will also be yes. taking my class at 10 30 okay so take really okay. care of you and your families take care Allah Hafiz. Allah Hafiz.